four racial dog whistles the politicians use while pretending they are racist. From our friends over at everydayfeminism.com by Jennifer Lupriel, a Tumblr contributor, I believe, which is great. We take all sorts here. We really do. The, the point I bring about, about um, dog whistling is that you might mean the word you say and you're speaking literally to somebody else and then a third party will overhear it and go, oh, they're talking about something else. I'm offended and that person is evil. I go, well, well no, they, they might actually be saying what they're talking about. And they might have a legitimate point there. You, you can't just say, oh, well, there's there's a problem with a, a protected group. So let's say AIDS and homosexuals. Okay? High prevalence there. So you say, oh, well, um, we feel overly attached to homosexuals and are really concerned that the gays are being persecuted. Therefore, <laughs> we, as we can't hold them accountable and responsible for their own actions, we're going to just push anything that could be seen to affect them more so, even if it's because of their own actions. We're going to see that as homophobic and shut down everybody else. It's ridiculous. That, 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 that's what I mean. That surely they're the real homophobic people if they think that gay people aren't in control of their own agency. <laughs> and the, the same goes for race and, and white supremacists. That if, if you think black people are inherently criminals and everybody thinks that, then surely you're much more racist or um, more of a white supremacist if you think that white people are more intelligent and uh, law-abiding people, then surely you're the white supremacist. If you don't think it's due to uh, maybe how the people grow up, if it's single-parent households and a culture that idealised violence, like uh, the, the gangster rap scene. I'm not saying the music itself. I'm saying that the culture embodied in that. I'm not going to go down the whole video games cause violence rabbit hole. I don't agree with that. I think it's cathartic, just like it was in Roman times with the Colosseums. Okay, let's go on to it then. So, how do they define dog whistling? I say, in his book, Dog Whistle Politics, How Coded Racial Appeals Have Reinvented Racism and Neglect the Middle Class. The middle class, which has just got richer, and the world class is moving up into it. That's why you see a small middle class, because everybody's got richer. But you don't like that, do you? Oh no, you get better with the Gini coefficient. Is, is, is that it? Where it's, it's measured on inequality within the nation or within whatever group you wish to view. And you go, oh well, increased Gini coefficient is linked to increased crime. And you know, some say um, poverty causes crime, others say, well, it's the Gini coefficient that causes crime because it's the uh, envy. Well, maybe. Crime causes the poverty, which causes the Gini coefficient. Have you have you thought of that? If there's a very high crime area, businesses aren't going to want to be set up because you've got to then raise the prices of your goods in order to offset the rate of stealing. And by doing so, people are less likely to shop at your place. In which case, your your profits aren't good enough, and you're just not going to bother. In which case, that then perpetuates the the poverty. Anyway, moving on. Uh, sort of changes in poll wording so little respondents understanding the questions differently than the researchers did. For example, um, the coded messages are used to reinforce racist ideas that the country's societal and economic problems are because of undeserving, lazy and violent people of colour. That is quite a claim. Let's see if you've got anything to back it up. Right, we're going to go through some examples. We've got two pages here. We've got the rational wiki as well. We, we all know what a lovely source that is. So, law and order. Uh, on... On the surface, seems pretty non-threatening. Politicians who use it seem to be saying their policies will focus on making sure the law will be upheld and that any law breaks will be held accountable. What could be so bad about that? Yeah, okay, cool. So it says it's often used to police low-income communities. Okay, because uh, crime causes poverty. Particularly black and Latinx, Latinx people. Well, if they weren't committing disproportionately large amounts of crime, then surely there wouldn't be a problem. So now you're just saying that, what, they're inherently criminal? Politicians use the phrase signal that people of colour aren't held in a criminal. No, no, they don't. If we're saying we're going to put in <laughs> better uh, law restraints or um, ensure that people follow the law and have punishments for it so the laws on the books are upheld equally to everyone everywhere, and you're saying that disproportionately affects black and Latinx people, then you're saying that they're inherently a criminal. Not the people putting in the laws. If it's equal law for everyone... <laughs> and the law stops violent crime, for example, 
uh, seeing as black people are forty percent of the population in America and commit fifty percent of the violent crime, then I'm saying it's broken homes, and you're saying it's skin colour, so you're the racist. Stop it. The welfare queen. To broader context, welfare queen is a strange phrase without any context. Seems to be talking about a woman who receives government assistance on its own. Why would that be bad? It's only receiving government assistance because then you're essentially being bribed for your vote. That could be why. Dog whistle, historically the term welfare queen has been commonly used stereotype against black women. Yes, that was increasing the social welfare state, which encouraged black women to marry the state instead of men, which results in terrible upbringings for their children. Is that what you're getting at? So getting free stuff doesn't make people responsible. Well, <laughs> I'm glad we agree that socialism is awful, great. It's used to imply black women in social programs like welfare are lazy people who don't do anything to help themselves. Instead, they have children to use government money and the tax dollars of hard-working, read white Americans to live luxuriously. Well, it's a similar thing to say that seeing as women are apparently earning less but spending more, then that means men are earning more and spending less, which means men are just giving it to women. <laughs> okay, fine. Not effects of today because of this rhetoric, increasing amounts of restrictions placed on public assistance programs, many of which make it even more impossible for people to pull themselves out of poverty. And they do say the Census Bureau data has proven welfare programs are extremely effective. I would strongly suggest not, given the decrease in marriage rates and increase of children born out of wedlock in um, low poverty areas which have a high welfare system. So, no. Um, stereotypes, stereotypes about black people living off the governments that exist today and black people are still demonised for needing public assistance. Well, considering the poorest town in America is a white town, that kind of blows you out of the border. It's equal across the bar. Okay. Okay, otherwise, <laughs> otherwise we're going to go into sports and say, this isn't equal representation for white people. No, of course not. It's just equal across the board. And if there seems to be a, a trend that is... Applicable on the whole, but not applicable on the individual. And we're not saying that it's a cause and effect based on <laughs> skin colour, but instead to do with the, the culture surrounding it, which leads to broken homes, or maybe it's to fast twitch muscle fibres if we're talking sport, then equal playing field will create exceptions from these people. Tough on crime. Pretty similar to Law and Order, yes, we get the idea. Same again. War and Terror. And it says that it comes from... George W. Bush declared we would be going to war with all terrorists capable of harming the US. But he did also say Islam was a peaceful religion. So, yeah, I might, I might, yeah, I might have to give him that one about George W. Bush. But I'd, I'd agree with War and Terror. Um, not with intervention, personally. Um, cause it's, but it has said that we've got tight immigration for it. So that's all good. So the US continues to bomb countless Muslim majority countries, which I, I disagree with, unless you're at war with them. But you say you're war on terror, not with the country, so be specific. Also, simultaneously banning Muslim refugees from entering, all of them are keeping America safe. Um, well, we don't, we don't have to buy the UN, you just go to the nearest safe country. but. Seeing as Saudi Arabia doesn't like the differences and schisms between the Wahhabis, the Shias, the Sunnis, and the different sects of Islam. Even though Muslims are over a uh, billion in population of the world, then yeah, we, America doesn't need to take them in. UK doesn't. Go to the nearest country. Better for everyone involved. Plus, it's a much more similar culture. If there's a problem because you're worried about safety, then we're also worried about safety, seeing as you guys would know them better. But they, they do mention uh, President Obama with more than 400 drone strikes in Pakistan, Yemen and Africa from 09 to 15. So good on them for going across the aisle because they, they mention obviously Trump, Bush, Clinton, Obama. So yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll give you your quality and your hatred. There you are. But that's what they're saying about dog whistles, but they might actually just be talking about straight laced things. Particularly with this article, we've got states' rights that they're saying it's, um, they got to justify tighter immigration law, restricted abortions, well, and based on slavery. 
that they might just be saying, hey, we think we've got a better idea of how to do it, but we're not going to keep people here. We're going to let people move to a different state if they want, if they want lower taxes, you know, moving from California to Texas, for example, or easier businesses to set up and you're, you're moving to, uh, or you're moving out of Denver, or you, <laughs> you, you like the weather, the, the, the people, the policies, whatever it might be, that allowing states rights allows more <laughs> multiculturalism, how about that, without hurting anybody else. Uh, religion class and race baiting, backwards caps and hippity hop. Love it. Thug culture, just use the N word. No, when I was growing up, thugs were always <laughs> white to me. I was I was always taught about thugs being white, that they're just brutish people. Could be anyone. Polish gangs are an issue. They're not black, but they'd be thugs. You call Tommy Robinson a thug, does that mean you're calling him a nigger? What? What? It comes off to say black people are dumb, or trying not to sound like they're saying black people are dumb. No, we're not talking about black people, alright? But you seem to think we are. So maybe that's, that's your view. It's the same as, you know, posting the tweet to the, um, <laughs> it won't it'll apply to the, the royal baby of having the chimp in a suit. They say, oh, you're, you're seeing race of chimp mocking blacks. Well, the poster wasn't, so maybe you're the one with a racism problem if you're <laughs> always equating black people with chimps. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Um, got ghettos as well, or the bad part of town. Again, poor areas can be white, but they're just talking about black, and if we're worried about ghettos, then yeah, I don't care who's in them. But you seem to be thinking that, you, you seem to have a very low view of black people. If you're saying that, oh, they're the criminals, and they're the brutes, and they're dumb, and they live in ghettos, and it's only black people who fulfill these, <laughs> these criteria, then you seem racist, and attributing that to somebody else. This is a textbook definition of projection. It's ridiculous. Taking your jobs, so abolishing birthright citizenship, so anchor babies, uh, basically what I'm talking about. You go to a country, legally, illegally, whatever, you might stay there illegally if you overgone on your visa, have a child there, and then they are a citizen of that country, even though you're not. Um, let's say along with the um, other rhetoric on illegal immigration is used to appeal to racists who are mad about brown people being in America at all, that this is less, t well, it's also used by legal immigrants in the country, saying, hey, well, why is it so easy for them to get in and it isn't for me, you're, you're already lowering the bar, and I came to this country because I want a strong, good country, not because I wanted it to be ruined by other people. So it's the legal immigrants who were hurt the most by it. MS-13, <laughs> those animals. Uh, cartels and um, gang members, near terrorists, I'd say. Well, they, they terrorise, but you could say that it's not against the state on political ideology, so... Okay, not a textbook definition of terrorist, fair enough. But they are terrifying. There you go. MS-13 Hispanic immigrants. Trump has used conflation to ask exactly whom he's calling animals. No, he hasn't. He has been explicit at talking about MS-13. Comprised mostly of Central Americans. Uh, only the listener will know. Cool, well, listen to it. Then you'll know. And don't just listen to a bit taken out of context. Anti-Semitic dog whistles. All oh, these are the best, aren't they? Um... Examples to talk about the controlled media without specifying who c controls it, but anti-Semites know who that means. Well, to other people, not at all. It's, <laughs> considering that we, that, that some people would say that it's, um, I have included, that the, the mainstream media props up overly progressive liberal values, which in, in and of themselves tend to be grossly anti-Semitic. Labour is a fine example of this. You can look back through... Uh, Communist Russia, for example, t to see how anti-Semitic they are. Because it, it seems that communism is a primarily atheist religion. So, of course, they're not going to like Jews. And the controlled media is owned by such people. International bankers, especially just running the world, that is holding Jews up to a very lofty regard. Surely then they're, they're juicy people. Surely. Saying that, oh yeah, <laughs> the Jews are in the world, well, th therefore they, they must be inherently the best. But if they just worked hard because they got a good work ethic and they've earned it, then good on them. <sighs> Dual loyalty, I don't think that's a, that's not a dog whistle. That's obvious. 
saying that the they got loyalty to two places and their real loyalty is to the foreign country or belief. Uh, Anti-Zionism or criticism of Israel. Yeah, you can criticize Israel and government without saying it's because of Jews. Yeah. And triple frequency to random person's name has been used as a dog whistle symbol in internet forums. I would say this is the one I agree with, that a lot of people wouldn't know what it means, and as far as I'm concerned, it only means one thing. So that's fair enough. Hidden in plain sight. So you've got three brackets around something, and it means Jew. Fair enough. I agree with you, well done. Homophobia, um, pointing out the opposing political candidate is single, never married, a lifelong bachelor, limpist that has no children if they're married, or flounced from a debate. Dog whistle term intended to send the signals to homophobes that others will miss. Or it could just say, if you don't have any children, you don't have any skin in the game, and therefore you aren't that well invested in the country's future, because you're going to be dead <laughs> at some point. But if you have children, then your bloodline may never end until the death of the universe, whatever. In which case, you care about your offspring. It's the same thing of why you should get rid of the inheritance tax. Because a lot of people, well, only 14% of the top 1% got a through inheritance. But a lot of people generate money for their children because they care that much about their family. So th this is an example of that, saying that if they don't have any children, then they're not that invested in the future. And having children means you are. Obviously you could say, well, maybe they have more empathy, but no, <laughs> I, I, I disagree. Uh, similarly, candidates who wish to let their voters know that they are against gay rights will often say they support family values. Um, ooh, if you say that men and women are different, they provide different things to a family, and therefore a nuclear family is best for the upbringing of the child, does that mean you're against gay rights, or you're just honest? I don't know, because that's how I'd mean it, but I'm not against gay rights. I'm just saying it like it is. I'm not trying to <laughs> dog whistle to homophobes. <sighs> Sorry. Um, against abortion, they talk about the Dred Scott decision instead of Roe v. Wade. Okay, fine. That's just political pandering. Just rephrasing what you want in a way to make it seem more appealing to people. Isn't that? Is that what this all is? Just ridiculous. That's what everybody does. You, you got to know your audience. A good talk, a good speaker knows his audience. Uh, Pentecost is anointed. Oh yeah, vision of the anointed by Thomas Sowell. Great book. Read it. Uh, I know the academic agent likes it as well. That's how I heard it from. Uh, dog whistle term for speaking tongues. Uh, yeah, ignore you know, that one. Doesn't matter. Anti-vaxxers. Um, instead of being more pro-vaccine safety, parents right to choose health freedom. So it's just like um, abortion. Fair enough. Anti-GMOs. Um, movement has noticed to use rhetoric around informing people as dog whistles. How low can you get? I, I haven't got anything against GMOs. I understand the argument. Um, I haven't seen enough evidence against it to say, well, I, I know that there are two. One is if you didn't genetically modify it on purpose, considering we already use nuclear radiation and the plants aren't like they were before. Like a, <laughs> if you look at a banana from a thousand years ago, then, then you'll see a great example of it. But we use nuclear radiation and just hope you get it right and then use that. But I understand the idea that if you change the, the plant, then it's not going to react in the same way for you and you're not going to get the benefits from it. Um, in which case, can you tell me what in particular we're getting from the plants or the food? Because if it's the minerals, it doesn't matter, they're metal. And if it's the vitamins, well, they're just compounds. So you say that that comes out different in the DNA, as in if you change the genetic makeup of it, then you're going to change the compound sufficiently that those vitamins are not going to be readily available or it's not going to suck up the nutrients as much. Well, that's easily testable. <laughs> so do that. Or you're worried that um, the, the, the point of the change in the genetics is to make them resistant to de-weeding uh, sprays. And then the people are going to eat that because they're not going to wash their food. So wash your food. Happy I could help. So they say, just label it and write to know a frequent Galilean cry is used despite many... Okay, yeah, cool. I'm all for that. Same as halal. Obviously, I'm against halal. I think it's unnecessary animal cruelty. Um, ideally, that'd be gone. So I'm using the same tactic here that I, I would say, just label it. People have the right to know. 
if something is halal, let people know. They might decide they don't want that sort of animal cruelty. Um, if they do, and that's the society, we'll, we'll move on with it. So be it. I, I will be against it, but I think that people agree with me, and therefore, if they knew, then they would be against it. So... They say, yes, just labelling right to know our frequent labelling cries used despite many leaders in the movement admitting the push for GMO labelling is nothing more than a tactic for the complete elimination of the practice of genetic engineering in the food industry. So, yep, yeah, that's, that's fair enough to so basically say that, hey, I, I want people to be aware of this because I think that they aren't, and if they were, they would agree with me. Yeah, fair enough, or at least take the victories that you can and then work from there. You know, you normally these progressions are incremental like at least we got rid of <laughs> prohibition what well, they did in America the history of England is a lot more complex in regards to that but and that's where proof comes from as well that in the English way it's seven fourths of the alcohol by volume because you try and set fire to it you soak black powder in it and then set fire to it and if it set fire then it was proof that it contain a high amount of alcohol and therefore would be taxed at a different rate and it just so happens it comes out at uh, seven-fourths of alcohol by volume whereas in America proof is just double alcohol by volume as a percentage so 100 proof means 50% alcohol um, and one unit of alcohol is 10 milliliters of pure alcohol there you go yeah anyway that's it from this one I know I got a little uh, carried, carried away at the end but thank you for watching Tell me what you think about dog whistling. Are, the, are these people just looking for offence anywhere and just, just finding it and creating terms to fit their ends? Or am I missing something and being brainwashed by people seeming reasonable but actually pushing horrible agendas that will somehow... No, I, I don't see how... It... I don't see how it can <laughs> come back and bite me in the end afterwards because if they say, oh yes, well, like law and order... I want to enforce the laws. Well, let's have a look at what the laws you're enforcing. I'm against the drug war, so <laughs> let's get rid of that. If you're saying that's affecting uh, black people the most, then sure, good. I'm, I'm glad I could help stop that crime. But if, if you're passing laws that we can agree with, and then the people affected fit into some certain categories, depending on how you define it and split it and make statistics work for you, I don't care. But if it comes in to say, oh, law and order and... Black people are disproportionately permitting more violent crime, therefore we shouldn't give them a chance of freedom and just lock them up straight away, then yeah, <laughs> I'd have a problem with it. So I, I don't see how you're going to win over anyone with racist um, policies by doing this. But anyway, I think that's just like the boy who cried Nazi. So have a good evening. Enjoy, enjoy the rest of your, your time, your week, your time alive. <laughs> and I'll see you next time. I'm still around.